What's up, navigation traders? Today is Friday, December 8th. Welcome to this week's video update. Before we jump into the alerts, I wanna make one quick announcement. Uh, we will be doing a free web class on December 20th at 3.30 p.m. Central Time, all about Tastyworks. So as you've probably seen the emails, <clears throat> excuse me, and the announcement about Tastyworks as one of our preferred brokers, we've been getting a lot of questions. So we decided to do a, a full web class on that. And I'm super excited. We are going to be joined by special guest Tom Sosnoff. So if you're, if you're not familiar with Tom, Tom and his team were actually the original founders of Thinkorswim before they built that up and ended up selling it to TD Ameritrade for $750 million. And they are the same team that is building and, and has built Tastyworks. So if you've, if you've never heard Tom speak or talk, we'll have a chance to interview him as well as get his insights and thoughts on the Tastyworks platform. So really excited about that. If you want to register, just go to navigationtrading.com forward slash TW dash registration. I'll be sending out an email about that. So uh, biggest thing is just mark that down on your calendar because you do not want to miss it. We're going to be giving away some cool stuff. So try to be there if you can. So let's go to this week's alerts, uh, starting with our first one, which we did in soybeans. And this was a closing adjusting trade where we closed out our put vertical side because price breached our break even to the, to the upside. So we closed out our put vertical. If we go to the platform and take a look, you can see uh, price has now come back into our range here. So we've got about 14 days left to expiration in this cycle. And so we will look for a little bit more downside potentially before we take that off in soybeans. And then uh, right after that, we send out another alert, an, an opening adjusting trade where we added another iron condor in soybeans in the February cycle. So this is the other piece of that. Price still in, in our range, just waiting for some more time and theta decay before we do anything there. Next trade was an opening adjusting trade in XRT. So we simply just added another short strangle in XRT. With XRT, you can see the, the implied volatility has stayed nice and high. Retail has just had an explosion the last few weeks uh, with, with tax reform and potentially you know, Christmas sales and things like that going on. So uh, it's, been a, it's been a good trading vehicle. However, uh, with our, so this is the new one we put on as you can see, price is still very centered. We haven't adjusted our other one yet, even though it's, it's, it breached through our, our short call and it breached through our break even barely today. But the reason I haven't made an adjustment on that one yet is because if we look at the, the premium that's still in just the put, in the 39 put, you can, you can see we still have a decent amount of premium. So a lot of times when price breaches our upside strike or upside break even, that means there's, there's very little premium left in that put. In this case, we've still got 42 days to expiration and there's still some decent premium left in that. And that's why I haven't made the adjustment yet. So just kind of a little nuance. Anytime you have that much time until expiration, sometimes you can give it a little bit more time to uh, potentially come back into range if it does continue higher, obviously we'll make the necessary adjustment by rolling up the untested side and continue to manage from there. Next trade was in Adobe and we closed out our call vertical side of uh, what was an iron condor in Adobe. I'm gonna come back to, the, to Adobe because we made another trade in that just today on Friday. So I'll come back to Adobe uh, closing adjusting trade in that gas. So we closed our call vertical side because we got, we got almost breached on our downside break even, but there's very, lift, very little uh, uh, value left in those options. So this was a case kind of the opposite of XRT where price hadn't even quite breached. However, there's very little value left in those options. And so that's why we, we closed it out in, in that gas. So if we take a look at Natty Gas, uh, here's, here's the vertical that we have on. So it, it's continued down. So we need a little bit of move up in that gas to benefit that piece. And then right after that, our next alert was adding another iron condor. So you can see 
Price still well within our range there. Need a little bit, little bit of a move up and some more time to pass to benefit that piece of the nat gas trade. Next trade, so that's the other nat gas iron condor I just mentioned. And then in EWW, we had a closing trade where we closed out a short strangle for a little over 40% of max profit. So that was a nice trade. Next one, opening adjusting trade in FXI. So this is where we added another strangle in FXI. And so you can see here, uh, price has moved up on us a little bit since we put it on, but still well within our range. And then we've got the other piece in here, both of which are in January. And this is our adjusted uh, strangle from previously. So need a little bit of an up move, some more theta to, uh, to decay in FXI to benefit that. You can see implied volatility is still very high with the percentile at 89. So we'll continue to keep positions in FXI uh, as long as that stays. If not, if it collapses, most likely we will be able to manage some winners there. So stay tuned in FXI. Next trade, opening adjusting trade in DIA. So we've been holding a short call vertical for a couple cycles uh, that was a part of a previous iron condor. And, um, and we were doing that because we wanted to hold that short bias, some of that short delta in our portfolio for protection. Uh, in this case, you know, the implied volatility got nice, at, nice and high in DIA at 95. So we wanted to add another position in DIA. So we added an iron condor. So if we take a look at DIA, you can see since then that the implied volatility has collapsed. The premium just got sucked out of the options today. Uh, so you can see we've, we've got some profit in that iron condor, but not enough to take off yet. And then we've got our uh, Dece December uh, uh, call spread that, that's continuing to move up out of our range. So we'll look to roll this. Uh, we've got about a week left in these options. Yeah, seven days. So early next week, we will be rolling that out to January to, uh, to continue to keep that short delta in our portfolio. Next trade was a closing adjusting trade in ES, in the S&P futures. We put on this iron condor just seven days before and we're able to book a, a profit of about a 30% of max profit gain in that piece. Now we're still holding the uh, 2590, 2620 call spread in December. So we will look to roll that by next week. And then we also have that long put vertical in ES, which is not part of the iron condor trade but we'll look to roll that next week as well. And again, that's just there to keep that, that short delta in our portfolio. So I, di I did get a question, uh, going back to the ES, I did get a question this week from a member about, about continuing to keep that in the portfolio. And yeah, it has definitely been a drag on our performance uh, because the market has just, you know, obviously it's been continuing just to grind higher, rip higher. So you're obviously gonna get hurt on your hedges, on your on your short delta in this kind of a market. But, you know, keep in mind, I mean, this market's not gonna go up forever. We've gotta keep that short delta in our, pre, uh, in our portfolio for protection. And I've been doing this a long time and it always ends up paying off in the long run. So, so just make sure you're keeping short delta in your portfolio in one way or another, whether it's through the long put vertical or short call spreads like we're doing here, just make sure you have some form of short delta in your portfolio. Next trade was a new iron condor in GLD. So GLD, the IV finally got over 50. It's been a while since we've done a gold trade. And if we take a look, it's already come down significantly today. So got that on when, when IV was at about the 50, IV percentiles at about the 50 level. And so we're just waiting for some more time to pass to get some, some, uh, some profit out of GLD. Next trade was an opening trade in EEM. The IV percentile got up to 89 at that point, so we sold a strangle in EEM. I, I try to mention this uh, when possible as an alternate alternate trade. You could you could buy the wings to trade an iron condor as well. The problem with with uh, equities like EEM, where they're only you know 40 some dollar symbols, you're just not you're not collecting enough credit to make it worth the transaction cost a lot of times. So I just mentioned. You know, just if you do that, just make sure it's worth the transaction costs. If we take a look at EEM, you can see we've had a nice contraction in implied volatility since then, uh, actually just today in there as well. 
uh, giving us a little bit of profit, but not much time has passed since we put that on. So waiting in EEM. And lastly, uh, well, two more trades. So uh, Adobe, I mentioned I was going to come back to this. So if you were in the trade with Adobe and you remember the huge move that it had, we originally put this trade on uh, right after earnings as a post earnings iron condor. It was working very nicely in this nice little range. And then Adobe came out with a surprise announcement about some new technology and the, and the stock just skyrocketed. It had about a two and a half, three standard deviation move, I think at the time. We continued to manage and, and adjust and so forth. And we got back uh, a portion of that loss, had, had price kind of come down for us. But we've got, I ended up closing out the whole trade today. So we took a loss on the Adobe trade, but not as significant as if we hadn't done any adjustments. And that's the key component. When you have something like that happen, which that is gonna happen from time to time, then you've just gotta stay mechanical, make your necessary adjustments, and, and try to you know get away from some of that loss. And so we were able to eat, at, eat away at some of that loss. Uh, but, when, but now we've got earnings coming up on the 14th and price was really centered in that iron condor and so it just made sense to take that off book a book a loss on the trade overall and just and just move on and then lastly uh in in baidu so uh, this was another situation where we had an earnings iron condor on in baidu and if we take a look at the chart you can see we put this on before earnings had this huge move down broke through our range and then and so we had to adjust and stay mechanical and by doing that we were able to take off the entire trade today and book a couple hundred dollar profit. So this is one where, you know, it went from initially a, you know, we're down about, I can't remember exactly, but I think over $600. But by just uh, mechanically managing, uh, get all the way back to profit and booked a profit of, of 200 bucks in that trade. So that is the key. Stay mechanical, stay small, and, and you'll be all right. So let's take a look at some of the other positions. I mentioned ES, I mentioned that gas in ZN. So this is our, our notes position. So we've got this, uh, this strangle on in the 10 year note. Not enough profit to take off yet, but uh, we've got a con we did get a contraction in the implied volatility of bonds down to really low. So uh, I'd like to see this, uh, you know, I I'd like to see us get, you know, 30, 40, 50% of, uh, of max profit before we before we take this off. So hopefully next week, assuming that stays in a nice range for us. I mentioned soybeans, wheat. We still have an iron condor on in wheat. So the price is kind of hanging out down here near, near our lower end of our range. So just need a little bit of an up move and some more theta decay in wheat. We're continuing to work our way out of that one nicely. I mentioned Adobe, Baidu, Dia, EEM, EWZ. We've got a strangle on an EWZ, got a little bit of profit there, but not enough to take off. I mentioned FXI, GLD, IBM. Starting to get some uh, nice profit back in IBM. So this is a, a, a trade that we originally um, had on and then we had to adjust and roll. So uh, assuming IBM stays in a decent range and we get a little bit more implied volatility contraction there, uh, hopefully we can take that off next week for profit as well. IWM, got a couple of positions on in IWM. So one is the short call vertical spread, which is part of an iron condor. Price has come back into our range, need a little bit more down movement to benefit that piece. And then we've got another full iron condor on, uh, which you can see we got a little bit of profit, but not enough to take off yet there. And the short call spread is in, in December. So we've got seven days left there, yeah seven days left. So we'll look to either close that or roll that piece uh, early next week. In the queues, so we've got a few different pieces of this trade on here. So we've got uh, two short call spreads that were from previous iron condors in Dece. This one has moved back into our range. Again, just need a tiny bit more movement before we take that off and book a profit in that piece. And then uh, another one here, which again is in our range I uh, just need, would like some more down movement before we do that. But those are all D, so we, were, well, we, we will either roll or book profits in that early next week. And then we've also got the full iron condor on in, in the queues, which not much profit or loss there. So just 
just waiting for some time to pass in the queues. And I already mentioned XRT, so that's it for this week. Hope everybody has a great weekend, and don't forget, make sure you put on your calendar December 20th, 3.30 p.m., the, uh, the Tasty Works uh, web class with Tom Sosnoff. Can't wait to see you there. It's going to be an exciting event. Everybody have a great weekend. Talk to you later.